On a cold, gray October morning in New York, 11,533 obsessed souls got together to run a marathon. I was one of them. And my question is, why? I mean, after all, the first guy to do a marathon was a messenger. And you know what happened to him. He ran 26 miles, delivered the news that the Spartans had won the Battle of Marathon, and dropped dead. I don't even have any news. What I have is this question, why me? It's hard to explain. All I'm really sure of is that it started back home. Los Angeles, California. Tawny-haired, golden god, swing and roller boogie through an endless summer of high surf. As you can see, that's not my story. somewhere that running is popular because it creates the illusion that you can outrace the ravages of age. I've been kind of serious about my running for a couple of years now. And uh, I've got to tell you, the, the ravages are winning. But the exercise makes me feel like I'm fighting back. The truth is, I don't know why I run. But there I was, warming up for a 10-kilometer race. My friends, Sal Feigenbaum and Bud Bays were getting ready, too. As usual, Sal was seeking strength or, or something from within. While Bud, also as usual, was, was just seeking. The weather was sunny and mild. I'd run the distance lots of times before. For 20 years, I'd been a happily married Costa Commons, so I had no reason to suspect that this would be the day that I'd become a victim, a middle-aged contentment's deadliest enemy. What my friend Sal calls the life force. imagination a little uh, we better move up it's going to start soon what's your hurry Saul? i thought you didn't believe in competition i don't i just like to get a good view of the start it's such an incredibly exciting scene we uh we better start moving up it's it's going to start soon i wish i'd said that you did i guess that's that's why it sounds so familiar to I thought you wanted to be on the outside of the pack. You don't get elbowed so much. Yeah, let's try inside today. Maybe, uh, maybe elbows are lucky. nothing that's a piece of cake, eh? I'm going for 44 minutes. 44 minutes? That's a mile every 6.769 through 3 minutes. 45. Oh, oh. We'll
Will you look at that? A little action music, please. But I wish you wouldn't growl. Bud's attitude is perfectly understandable. After all, running is a metaphor for sex. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce to you a legendary distance runner, Laszlo Tabori. I didn't say anything about fantasy. Six more miles to go. How, uh, how fast would you say we're going? Uh, about six minute miles. I'm trying to come in around 38. I'm, uh, I'm looking for 37. Oh, fabulous. Vicente Boulevard. You ever, uh, you ever run around there? Sometimes. <coughs> Are you okay? I may be, may be pushing it just, just a hair. You better slow down. Something in the body of the finely trained athlete responds to the challenge of competition. The shot of adrenaline courses through the veins, giving new energy and unexpected strength. That, unfortunately, didn't happen to me. Feigenbaum beating me?
I came in 166, 58 minutes. How'd you do? I burned myself out early. Don't feel bad. At least you beat me. Of course, if I was competitive about it, might have been a different story. But then, who cares? I'll get the car. You want your time? I think I prefer a sanity test. No, I'm only kidding. Hi. How was your time? Oh, uh, uh, great. How, how was yours? Oh, I got lucky. I was the 12th woman to finish. 38 minutes. There we go. You came in 59 minutes, 58 seconds. Uh, call it an hour even. Uh, that's not my time. I'm, I'm holding, holding that stick for, uh, for a friend. Oh. Call it 5958. Uh, excuse me. Uh, would you happen to be going back to to the starting area where the where the run started? Sure. My my car is back there. The uh, the, the start. Sure, hop in. Hey, Walter. Come on, it's time for some ice cream. Hey, Walter, for crying out loud, come on. Thousands of adorable calories. All safe because of our incredible output of energy during the run. I am serene. Now, I'm a tiger. You know, running does something to the inner beast. I tell you, if a beautiful woman comes within 100 yards of me now, her life is in danger. <laughs> Strenuous exercise used to do the same thing to me before Helen and I got a divorce. Now I just mellow out and enjoy the afterglow. Well, so if some wild lady happened to show up, you wouldn't be interested, right? I didn't say that. <laughs> You know, you guys are amazing. I mean, Sal, you're pushing 50, and the two of you are talking about girls like you were a potsy in the Fonz. Look, you want me to stop acting like a man just because I'm married? Get with it, Walter. We only go around once. That's not definite. Relax. We know that you and Anita are happily married. Bud and I promise not to lead you astray. Walter, astray? Never in a million years. You know, it's all those gorgeous chicks out there. They drive anybody crazy. No, the problem comes from within. There are lots of names for it, but I like to call it the life force. I believe uh, prune juice is supposed to help that. <laughs> the life force is like the memory bank on a computer. Silent and useless until the right button is pushed, and then... Don't press a button on my life force. I don't want to start beeping all over the place. When a man's life force button is pushed, he will perform the function fate has decreed for him, whether he wants to or not, regardless of consequences. Believe me, once those primitive drives are unleashed, no one can resist. Your leg wouldn't act up if you took desiccated liver. You know, I keep all the primitive stuff outside the house. That way I'm happy, Cindy's happy, no hassles. You really don't believe infidelity is good for marriage, do you? Hey, Saul, I'm not the one who's divorced, remember? Trust is very important to a marriage. Without trust, you can't share the common interests that bond a relationship together. What, uh, what common interest do you and Anita share? We, uh, we both like Italian food. All the linguine in the world won't save you if your life force kicks up, believe me. The life force was pure baloney. The only thing I had to worry about at that moment was Going a new leg. Life force. Hooey.
win? You've heard of the uh, thrill of victory and the agony of defeat? Guess which one Daddy is. Oh, Walter, you proved something again. What is it? A quadriceps? A doctor? Cat? Instep? Yes. I don't know why you keep running when you know you could hurt yourself. Because it keeps my body supple and gorgeous, like a young gazelle. Well, I better get in the hot tub before I stiffen up. You know, uh, actually, I, I really ran well there for, for a stretch. I, I think you would have been impressed, you know, if, if you'd, you'd been there. I wish I could have been. But I'm giving a lecture on Beowulf tomorrow to 300 freshmen, and I haven't even assembled my notes. Well, if I'm not back in a week, call the paramedics. What do you say we all go out for dinner tonight? Maybe some nice linguine? Uh, sure. Sure, Italian. Italian food's always good. Well, that was another spot of nostalgia. Chinese restaurant for a change. Something else today. He has this, uh, this crazy theory that uh, middle-aged men are programmed to freak out. Maybe that's what happened to Saul, so now he expects it to happen to everyone else. Do I have to use the linen? Please. Saul is always into some philosophical trip. Last year, it was primal screen therapy. Remember? kept going into a, a closet to yell. Somebody pressed my button. I, I was going to start beeping. What? Uh, nothing. Sal has this, this little computer. And it plays the music of the life force. Music of the life force? Walter? You tossed and turned half the night. Yeah, I, I had some um, you know, dreams. was in that orange juice. Anita, I I'm 47 years old. The, the past 20 years I've spent with you have been the, the best and, and, and the happiest of, of, of my life. 
I like them too, Walter. Maybe I've, I've been spending too much time running. Running, I'm late. Uh, I love you. I love you too, Walter. I knew then that I caught myself in time. And I experienced a deep sense of relief. Like when you take off thermal underwear on a, on a warm day. Only uh, more, more profound. I felt my life was on a, an even keel again. My values and my future were once again secure and predictable. Never again would I allow myself to be tempted by some impossible vision of forbidden delight. Some possible vision of forbidden delight. Walter, this door's unlocked. You seem a bit anxious and disoriented this morning, but you're feeling yesterday's run. I'm perfectly all right, son. I might be a little edgy about meeting with Litchfield this morning. It's not our beloved employee who's making you nervous. It's your leg. If you've made the proper mental preparations and given your body pure, natural foods, it'll be fine today. I am nice to my body. My body's nice to me. Watch your head. Your body is getting on my nerves. Calcium, calcium, magnesium is what you have to load up on vitamin C's. Mr. Burton? Mr. Burton? I, I was just uh, uh, looking looking out the window. The uh, the weather report said uh, said no rain and it, it isn't uh, it isn't uh, raining. Uh, wh what is it, uh, Miss McMasters? Mr. Litchfield wants to see you. I'll send him right in, sir. You can go in now, Mr. Burton. Walter, come on in. Sit down. 
We were just talking about the terrific job you did on cost projections for the FJ-4. General, this is our controller, Walter Burton. Yes, we ran into each other earlier. Oh, I believe I can sell these figures to the Pentagon. That's terrific, terrific. Now, I think the next... Research, mock-ups, testing, environmental impact, if any, <laughs> electronics. Oh, good grief, what happened to the Helios satellite? I, I guess there's a lot of wind this time of year. <laughs> well, it's only a model. The real one is as solid as a rock. Now, General, you see the setup. You'll understand why the overrun projection was minimal. Right, Walter? Well, we, uh, we tried to be realistic with, with our preliminary limit. And realistic figures always look high going in. But down the line, they always even out. Oh, I agree. The trouble is they don't like biting the bullet in Washington. Not at first, anyway. Well, uh, our accounting procedure saves, too, doesn't it? Doesn't it, Walter? Walter? Uh, I, I think I'd better uh, check out the... Uh, the computer runs on the uh, FJ-4 uh, uh, contingency budget be before the, the, uh, the general leaves. <laughs> He's a dedicated man, General. Very dedicated. Charlie House running around the building? No, I uh, know the, uh, the ele ele elevator's too slow. Too slow for what? I, that's all. I, I can't talk now. The general is in town. He's, he's waiting to meet me. What you doing, Mr. Burton? Oh, hello, hi. I, I was just, uh, I was just looking for some, uh, some identification papers. What for? What for? Uh, because, uh, because I have to. Uh, because I, I was looking for the, uh, for the owner's name. Be, uh, because I, I want to, I want to buy a car like this, uh, for, for my wife. Uh, it's a it's nice, nice car, you know. Solid, tight, tight center of gravity. You want a car like this? Maybe I can get you a deal. My brother-in-law sells them. I talk to him. I know he can help you. You know what I mean? Well, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd appreciate that, but uh, you know, there's no, no real, real hurry. Uh, is this color okay, or you want something else? Red, fine, fine. It's sharp. <laughs> Uh, yes, yes, sir. While you're in your file, will you also give me your overrun costs on the MX-9? Washington is driving me up the wall. Burton. Burton? Burton, can you hear me? Burton? Burton, can you hear me?
wait a minute. How do you know she's going to be taking a class today? I called Solano while the other class was in session, and I asked when it would meet again. Sneaky. Those whom the life force would control at first make sneaky. Will you knock off that life force business? I saw this girl, I became attracted to her, and now I've, I've let a whole kind of fantasy infatuation build up in my imagination until it's, it's way out of proportion. I just want to get it over with once and for all. So that's why you're coming here to see her, to get it over with? Of course. What, what other reason would I have? To confront her, you'll see she's nothing special, and that'll be that. That's what'll happen. Probably. Are you beginners? Uh, yes. No. Five dollars a session, twelve for fifty dollars. No refunds if you quit. Uh, I think maybe uh, one session, you know, to get the uh, get the feel of things. She here yet? <clears throat> what do I what do I do? Prepare yourself by focusing your energies within. Sometimes it helps to imagine you're looking into your head or your heart with your third eye. My third eye? It's mostly relaxation. I'm, uh, really not very limber. I, actually, I'm a, I'm a runner. Long distance runner. You, uh, you ever run? R uh, running's supposed to be good for your, your uh, cardiovascular system. begin class with the full lotus spine perfectly erect close the eyes and begin to inhale all love and positivity and then exhale all negativity and any mistrust and gracefully unfold the legs and without using the hands inhale gracefully to a standing position hands in prayer at the heart will begin our sun salutation inhale gracefully out and back exhale forward to floor Inhale, left leg back, toe flat, head up. Retain the breath, body straight. Exhale, knees, chest, forehead. Inhale up, nasty cobra snakes. Exhale, bums up. Inhale, left leg between the hands. Exhale the other leg forward. Hold your angel ankle. Inhale up. And unfold like a flower. So 
somebody lose this? Perfectly good ring. Ooh, looks like old gold. A lovely ring. It's a man's ring. Yeah, that must be mine. Slip that in my pocket. <laughs> And now, we're all going to be beautiful little ballerinas. We begin by looking at a point straight ahead and look within the point, not just at it, while bringing the foot up, hold the inside, and exhale gracefully forward, holding om one, om two, Om three, and bringing yourself back to perfect prayer pose. Really going to wait for her? Do the confrontation bit. Tomorrow morning, I want to hear all the details. Wait till I tell Bud. He'll go bananas. Don't tell him anything. Nothing is going to happen. Probably. That, uh, that was quite a workout, wasn't it? Not bad. Was that your first try at yoga? I, uh, I was that, that rotten? No, you were that determined. Where do I know you from? We do know each other, don't we? Uh, sort of. Uh, we were both in the 10K race uh, last weekend. I'm, uh, I'm Walter. Oh. Uh, Smith. B uh, Burton. Smith, uh, Smith Burton. There's a hyphen in there, but I... I never pronounce it. Pleased to meet you officially, Walter Smith hyphen Burton. My name is Barry, with an I-E at the end instead of a Y. Barry Johnson. Well, it, it was nice to meet please, you. Please don't go. Um, I'm, I'm not very uh, sophisticated at this, but I, uh, I have a confession to make. What did you do? Nothing. Yet. Perhaps I could buy you a drink. Why don't you come shopping with me? I, I, I have a few things I have to pick up across the street. Oh, it's all right. I, I wouldn't mind a bit. Are you sure you can walk? Oh. <laughs> so the airline sent me to uh, SRT for a training course in the mock-up of the new passenger plane. To help put the bugs out from the steward at this point of view. Uh, my friend Sal, you know, the guy with me in the, in the yoga class, uh -huh. he, he designed the interior of that plane. Oh, he did? He's a very, very gifted person for, for someone of his height. <laughs> you answer so many questions when you fly for a living. It, it becomes almost mechanical. Like, yes, I, I, I do like my job. No, the engine is not on fire. <laughs> yes, I am not a Virgo. I am a Pisces. I was born March the 18th. My, uh, my birthday's October 21st. Really? Yeah. The date of the New York Marathon. I, I ran in it last year. I'll be running in it this year, too. You, ra you ran in the marathon? Mm-hmm. The, the whole 26 miles? 26 miles, 385 yards, and I loved every foot of it. I mean, just to know that you, you can do it, to hang in there and, and, and know you're going to go all the way. You, uh, you really get intense about it. Sorry. No, no, I didn't. I didn't mean that. I've never, I've never run in a marathon, but uh, I run enough, you know, to certainly be able to understand that, that feeling. I'm on reserve this evening. I have to go home and sit by the phone. I'm staying with my aunt until my transfer to New York becomes permanent. Well, I really enjoyed meeting you, Walter. Uh, Barry, I'd, uh, I'd like to see you again, very much. Can you call me this evening between 8.30 and, and, and 9? I, I should know my schedule by then. Here. You will call? As uh, sure as my name is Walter Burton. Smith. Uh, Smith. B Burton uh, Smith. Hype, hype. I'll, I'll call.
Walter Burton, I will never forgive you for this. Why didn't you say something to me? You owe me that much. I mean, I, I just don't know what to say. <laughs> it's beautiful, honey. Oh, you knew I just love it, didn't you? Uh, love it? Mr. Burton, I told you my brother-in-law would fix you up, didn't I? <laughs> is it perfect? What is it perfect? Good. Perfect. <laughs> I'll bring Ernie. That's my brother-in-law. I'll run to your office tomorrow to settle up, if that's okay. Gotta run. It's my bowling night. Thanks for the coffee, Mrs. V. So long. Goodbye, Manuel. Oh, Walter. You're not really getting me this gorgeous vehicle, are you? Well, I'm kind of, you know, it's the least I can do. Oh, Walter. Mm, you are wonderful. Now we have to hurry and get ready, because we're going to Pavilonis for dinner tonight. Uh, Pavilonis for what? Well, uh, Professor Previn, G Greg, the, my boss at the English department, well, he's taking us out to celebrate. Honey, I can't stand Greg Previn. He, he's always uh, sucking on his pipe and, and clearing his throat. And, and when he isn't doing that, he's, he's checking his cuffs. Uh, celebrate what? My appointment. Walter, I am going to organize the agenda for the College English Conference in San Diego. The dean just made it official this afternoon. Well, honey, that's, that's fantastic. I'll get out your navy suit and start the shower. This is a very special moment in my life. Mine, too. faculty was opposed to including <coughs> Charles Dickens in the Victorian literature segment, Anita <coughs> persevered. Now, consequently, Oliver Twist will be at the uh, San Diego conference with us, and uh, if he asks for more gruel, I'm <coughs> sure he'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Greg, I have more than one thing to celebrate t tonight. Um, just before we left for dinner, Walter presented me with a beautiful new sports car. Well, <clears throat> congratulations. <laughs> uh, maybe we could uh, take it to San Diego with us for the <clears throat> conference weekend. Uh, Camarere, uh, <clears throat> io vorrei campare uno vino blanco <clears throat> classico. Certainly, sir. <clears throat> I've uh, just uh, ordered us some white wine. <clears throat> uh, weekend. You're going to San Diego for a weekend with <clears throat> him? And 300 other English teachers. <laughs> you, uh, you don't have to stay overnight. Well, well I'm, I'm a general I... chairman. Anita will have a great deal to do uh, <clears throat> before the conference begins if she's not on hand for the uh, <coughs> whole enchilada, uh, she'll be into a time <coughs> problem. Time. What's wrong? No, uh, no nothing. I, um, I got an anchovy caught, caught in my throat. I, I'll, be, uh, I'll be right back. <coughs> I'm sure he'll be <coughs> fine. Walter, you okay? Uh, I'm, I'm fine, honey, I'm fine. Mary, this, this is Walter. Walter, I thought you weren't going to call. I'm, I'm sorry, I got, I got tied up. Uh, Wal Walter, you're, you're not sick, are you? Uh, I'm not sick, honey, I'm fine. Barry? Barry, uh, are you?
are you in a tunnel or something? I, I'm hearing yelling and echoes. I, I would love to see you later. Oh, Walter, I wish I could. But I have to fill in on the flight to Phoenix tonight. What? I said I can't see you tonight. I have to fly. When? 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 When can I see you? I'll be back Friday around 7. I, I hope you're not sulking about the conference being on a weekend. I, I'm not angry, honey. Just, just give me a minute. I still can't hear you very well. Where can I pick you up Friday? How about the bar in the Holiday Inn? I'll meet you in the lobby about 7.30. Uh, uh, great. Wh which one? Walter, I've got to run. I've loved talking to you. See you. Which holiday in? Uh, Barry. Barry? Barry. Walter, please don't be angry with me and, and don't be hurt. About what? That conference in San Diego. It takes place the weekend of the 21st. Uh, my birthday. I hate missing your birthday, sweetheart. But we have spent your last 20 birthdays together. M maybe we could celebrate it before I go. Or after I get back. We could celebrate it before and after. Before and, and after. Whatever you say. Maybe you could find something interesting to do that weekend. Well, you know, I'll find, I'll find, find something to do. You're not upset anymore. No. Good night. Good night. You got to think harder, Walter. She must have said something that would give you an idea which holiday in she meant. All I could hear was Friday, 7.30. She never said which one. If she said anything else, I don't remember. Hypnosis is my jockey memory. I have a friend at the marina who works with the police. All right. Probably better to let it end this way. I mean, there's nothing more pathetic than some old fud getting head over heels about a young, beautiful woman with or without the life force. You're not getting older, Walter. You're getting smarter. You know, there are a lot of knockout chicks out there just waiting for a smoothie like you to show up. Smoothie? Yeah. If you covered me with margarine, I wouldn't be smooth. I've just been doing a little telephone research. There are three possible airports this lady could fly into. The way I see it is, she could be at any of eight, nine, ten, eleven holiday inns. Get on a horn and reserve a big double room with champagne in each one. Eleven double rooms? Well, you dig this lady, don't you? Yeah, but I... I just bought a car I wasn't exactly planning on buying. You gotta go for it, babe. Saul, what's a scam? A simple matter of logistics. Give the reservation clerk Barry's description and the phone number of the bar. Bud and I will wait there and take the call when she shows up and relay the word to you when you call us. Yeah, it's like a command post in the war. Come on, go home and change for action. You got a good cover story for Anita? I told her I, I had made a general. Good. Go. Bud and I will make the calls. Go, baby. We'll hold down the fort. Geronimo! <laughs> wow! Here's your list, one through 11. Guys, I, you know, I, I don't know what to say. How much, uh... How much do uh, 11 double rooms with champagne come to? This is no time to worry about pennies. It's almost 7.30. Uh, guess I'm off. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Hair drives him crazy. You need some color. Vermilion stimulates emotions. <laughs> wait, here, catch it for luck. Well, I uh, guess I'll be in touch. Keep them coming and stay off the phone. May I help you, sir? 
Yeah, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm re uh, registering. My, uh, my name is Smith. Uh, uh, Bert. Smith, uh, Smith, Bert. Oh, yes. Was, uh, was there a, a beautiful uh, young lady waiting here just a, a few moments ago? Front desk, good evening. Who? This is for you, Mr. Smith. Uh, Burton. S Smith Burton. Walter, number seven just called. There's a woman waiting in the lobby. North Hollywood. How, uh, how, how do I get back on the freeway? Well, yes, your room is ready, Mr. Smith Burton. Uh, we'll have the champagne up as soon as the freeway. A left and then a right onto Airport Boulevard. We already told you. She has two of them. They're perfectly matched. No, I don't mean that. I mean, tell me about them. Are they long and silky or short and firm? Long and silky. between her head and her shoulders. You know, you have no poetry in your soul, Saul. That's got to be Walter. Uh, I'll handle it. Thank you. Uh, bud, th this is Walter. Oh, Walter. Uh, number four called, and she's there, Walter, waiting for you in all her glory. This this woman is wrong. She, she doesn't even look like Barry. Bud? I don't feel too good. Walter, forget four. Nine and ten are possibilities. They both call. The call came in at 9.17. I took it down myself. Stuck in Phoenix until tomorrow night. I'd love to see you then if you're not too angry. Love, Barry. Would you like that champagne now, sir? One of those times when I wished I had a philosophy to excuse what I'd almost done, but I didn't. So I was stuck with the realization that I was well on my way to becoming a dirty rat. for dinner? Uh, Cornish game hens, green beans, Irish potatoes, chocolate mousse. And you actually made it all with your own little hands? Why didn't you just take her out for dinner? Well, Annie, over the years, your, your mother and I have gone out to dinner so much, I, I sort of wanted to make this meal symbolic of the, of the sharing and, and the caring. Cooking is, uh, is like a gift of love. Why didn't you ever do it before? Dad, it's just my ride to Sissy Kramer's. Hi! I couldn't get Dad's car, but I got Jeff's van. All right. What, what, what van? Who, who is he? I thought you were going to Sissy's. It's only your brother Robert, Dad. No sweat. Bye. Have a real sexy evening. Hi, sweetheart. 
Listen, I'm sorry, but, but with all these preparations for the conference and my regular class workload, I'm falling way behind. So Greg, Previn, and I are going to have some hamburgers sent up to the office, and we'll both stay with it until we get back on track. E everything okay at home? Uh, sure, hun hunky-dory. I'll be home as soon as I can, okay? Uh, sure, sure, honey, fine. Bye. Bye. Well, <clears throat> congratulations. Uh, perhaps we can take it to uh, San Diego with us for the conference weekend. <clears throat> Uh, weekend. You're uh, going to San Diego for a weekend with uh, <clears throat> him? Uh, uh, Barry? Yeah, th uh, this is Walter. No, no, I'm, I'm not mad at you. I, I want to see you right away. What? I'm leaving for New York tonight. I've seen a lot of movies, and, and David Niven never had problems like this. <laughs> oh, Walter, you make me laugh. I I'll have time for a drink before I take off. Maybe you can meet me in the bar at the Holiday Inn. Which Holiday Inn? The one in Fresno or the one in Guam? L.A. Airport. I I'll see you there as, as soon as humanly or inhumanly possible. to conduct training seminars at flight attendant school in New York so I could train for and run the marathon. <laughs> My supervisor decided that I should get there a little early so I could sit in on a few executive meetings and... Why don't you come with me? To, to New York? Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I can't. Not now. I mean the weekend of the race. It's your birthday and we could celebrate it together after I run the marathon. No, after we run it together. What do you say, Walter? I've, I've never, I've never run in a marathon. And in New York, you know, it's so, so far away. I, I, I don't know. You know what it feels like when you reach deep down in yourself for the stamina and the courage to will yourself to make that next mile and the next. Well, New York, that feeling is ten times as intense. I, I've, I've never run over, over fifteen miles before. 20th mile that's the killer. The wall. The, the wall? The wall. The human body is supposed to run out of everything at 20 miles. From there on, you're running on air and guts. It hurts. <laughs> and you keep asking yourself over and over again, what the hell am I doing? Why am I wrecking myself? Because you, you're, you're a runner. Mm -hmm. You're a runner, Walter. It's time. I'll be at the Mayflower Hotel. Bye. Bye. Uh, Barry, you, you really think I can do it? I know you can. I, I'll, I'll do it. I'll, I'll be with you and I'll, I'll run in the marathon on my 48th, 7th birthday. <laughs> I'll see you on the 20th. Yeah, well, I, you know, I didn't want to. I didn't want to, you know, eat that alone. So I, I just, I just went out for a, for, for a bite. You are the sweetest, most thoughtful, considerate husband in recorded history, mm. and I feel absolutely horrible that I wasn't here. Mm. Well, uh, you should because I. I burned my pinky making the, the potatoes. Oh, and I take full responsibility for that. Mm -hmm. I also noticed that you sent Annie away for the evening. Well, uh, it's, 
Sissy Kramer wanted, wanted her to come over. Some, something about a, a wild party. Mm. Well, good. I'll give her something to write about in her diary. Couldn't have been much of a bite you had out the way you're stuffing yourself. Well, you know those those fast foods, you know, they don't they stick the roof of your mouth, not not your ribs. <laughs> Listen, um, I've been thinking while you're in uh, while you're in San Diego, um, maybe I'll um, go to New York and uh, run the marathon. That sounds like a wonderful idea, sweetheart. But uh, you'll have to get started training pretty soon. I mean, running a 26 miles isn't something you just get up and do. Listen, I know if you set your mind to it, you'll do very well. Walter, I wish I could spend your birthday with you. It's just that I've worked so hard to become an associate professor, and chairing part of this meeting is very important. Maybe I, um, maybe I shouldn't go to New York. I mean, New York is so far away, and, you know, San Diego's so close. Oh, no. No, I would feel so much better knowing you're doing something you really enjoy while I'm gone. And make the most of it. New York. The Big Apple. You serious? Yeah. You guys want to come? You, you and Bud? Are you crazy? We'd have to bust our bones training. And eating properly. The strength and stamina we'll need only comes from eating the right and proper foods. Yeah, like what, kryptonite? Look, it'll be a real kick. I read the brochure. New York's an exciting place, full of, uh, chicks. Look, when you cross 59th Street Bridge and you get on First Avenue, nothing but gorgeous girls. There's fashion models, dancers lining the streets, looking for, for heroes to kiss. Okay, I'll go. You'll go? I thought all you cared about was proper nutrition. It's possible to eat right and freak out. <laughs> you know what? I, I can tell Cindy that I'm, I'm going away on business. She always buys that one. <laughs> You're coming, too. You're going to run the marathon with us. Baby, I just want to hang in to those beauties on First Avenue and then look out! We're all going! <laughs> And uh, <clears throat> that's the way I think it should be done, <clears throat> if you have no objection. None whatsoever, the object. Oh, I think we're all set. <laughs> all right. Well, um, I'll wait for you in <clears throat> the car, Anita. I'm sure you'd like a moment alone with your <clears throat> husband. Uh, good luck on your marathon run, Walter, <clears throat> old man. <clears throat> your nose, <clears throat> your clothes. <clears throat> oh, come on, Walter. Now, don't be like that. Greg was only trying to be polite. I don't trust him. His, uh, his twitches are set too close together. Please, don't start that again. All right, but he better not try anything. Sweetheart, I told you, you don't have to worry about that. Okay? And you have a good trip, and good luck to you. You too. Walter, tell me not to go, and I won't go. I just won't go. I mean, no conference in the world is worth more to me than you are. So just, just say the word. And Anita. No, no. It would be selfish of me. I mean, you have a right to run that marathon. So, good luck, darling. I love you. Drive carefully. Yes, of course. Bye-bye, darling. Bye -bye. York's a hell of a town, the grass is up and the back is down, the people ride in the hole in the ground, New York, New York's a wonderful... Daddy! Aren't you going to take me to Aunt Harriet's before you go to the airport? Aha! Uh -huh. uh, sweetheart, you, you didn't think I'd forget something like that? I can't eat this, stewardess. It has chemical additives. I'm sorry, sir. Special food orders must be made in advance. This is poison. Eat your chicken, Sala. It won't kill you. Eat the silverware. It's 
pure steel. Look, the 59th Street Bridge. I can see myself running across in a marathon, eyes clear, my mind at rest. Yeah, I can see myself running down First Avenue where all the broads are going ape. <laughs> I can't see anything cooped up in this smelly cab. We're runners. We should run into town. Oh, you're putting me on. It seems perfectly natural to me. Take our luggage to the Mayflower Hotel. We'll meet you there. Those are our bags. Would you just bring them in? Thank you. Hey, how you like that? We beat the cab by 10 minutes. I've uh, <clears throat> arranged for our luggage to be sent up. This uh, <clears throat> should be an ideal place for the conference. It has a genuine aura of serenity and uh, <clears throat> solitude. No, uh, uh, Barry, uh, Barry wasn't in her room. Yeah, she had to go to a, to a staff meeting. We're, we're going to go running when, you know, when, she, when she gets back. Yeah, could, you, could you tell Bud to, to hold it down? I, I, I can hardly hear you. It, it's not Bud, it's Mitzi. Who's, who's Mitzi? That's a girl Bud met at the newsstand. It, it, is she the one that's tap dancing? I, I can hear somebody doing the time step. No, that's Bud. He's, he's dancing with her friend Marlene. It is unusual to, to find two redheads at the, at the same newsstand. Well, I'm, I'm glad you both have, have dates tonight. I, I, I gotta run. Until this moment, I, I wasn't sure you were going to be here. No, me either. <laughs> well, I'm, uh, I'm still three hours behind. I better just set my watch. Okay. While you're doing that, why don't I change into my running clothes and we'll take a look at Central Park. Do, uh, do I... I'm, uh, I'm, I'm ready when you are. The 20-mile barrier's up at the Willis Avenue Bridge at 135th Street, that, up that way. <laughs> Near the end of the race, when you first come into the park at 5th Avenue and 102nd Street, you've done 24 miles, and you aren't sure if it's day or night. He took my wallet! It's only my credit cards, Walter! Forget it! Oh! <laughs> hey, come back here with that. You got me. Now what, Turkey? Uh, what, do you, what do you want with a wallet? It's only got uh, credit cards in it. I, uh, I'll give you 50 bucks for it. Uh, 70. 73, that's all the cash I got on me. Nice doing business with you, baby. <laughs> Are you all right? He handed it right over. 
Barry, what's wrong? I hurt my ankle, Walter. Come, come on, I'll, I'll, I'll help you. Just so you could get me alone? It, uh, it had to come to this. I felt it ever since we started working together. I <clears throat> couldn't keep my eyes on my <clears throat> textbooks. I thought I got the job because of my superior qualifications. Well, uh, <clears throat> uh, of course. What happens here will have uh, uh, no effect on your <clears throat> working situation, no matter what you <clears throat> choose to do. Oh. It won't make any difference. <clears throat> Not at all. But don't give me your answer in words. Useless words where love doth bloom. Say nothing. I will read your response in your <clears throat> eyes. swelling and some pain for several days. Will I be able to run in the marathon tomorrow? <laughs> you know the answer to that. This will minimize the discomfort and make you sleep. How's the, uh, how's the patient, doctor? She should be resting comfortably soon, and for the next week at least. If that begins throbbing tomorrow, call me, and we'll have it x-rayed. Thank you, Doctor. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. I think somewhere along the line, you and I uh, offended a gypsy, and uh, this is his curse. Oh, I'm fine. It's just... You'll have to run the marathon for both of us. I'm thirsty, Walter. Yeah, I'll, I'll get you, uh, get you something cold. Barry, I have, uh, I have something to tell you before, before anything else happens. Uh, I, I haven't been uh, totally truthful with you. Uh, Barry, I'm, I'm married. I already knew that. It's written all over you. And it doesn't, it doesn't make any difference to you? Sure does. But in your case, I was willing to make an exception. You're a very special man, Walter. Well, you're, uh, you're special too. See, that's, uh, that's what my problem is. I, I also think my wife is, uh, is special. See, I've, uh, I, I've never done anything like, uh, like this before. I mean, I, uh, I, I wouldn't be here now. And uh, this is gonna sound ludicrous, but 
I, I heard the, the music of, of the life force. But that, but that doesn't matter. All, all that matters is I, I, I dared to, to seize the, the shining moment. I'm, I'm here and, and you're here and, and, and we're here together. And, and this, this is our night. Uh, Barry, you're, you're not dead, are you? This is uh, Walter Burton, please. You, you don't you don't think she's in her room? Uh, then how about Professor uh, Gregory Previn? He he left word not not to be disturbed. I uh, no 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 uh, no message. Life force or no life force, this obviously wasn't one of my better days. Walter! I was hoping we would start her up together. All for one and one for all. Like the three musketeers. I only see two musketeers. Uh, maybe Bud isn't going to make it? He will. We both had an early night. What about Marlene and um, uh, Mitzi? Nothing. Those ladies were insurance salesmen, salespersons. Bud bought an accident policy. Hey, what a night, huh? What a night, you know what I mean? He knows, I told him. It was real. Oh, oh you told me. Walter? I'll, uh, I'll see you guys on the bus. Is that Barry? You're my idol. I bought us some presents. I thought they'd be just good enough to, to wear until we were warmed up and just tacky enough to give away when we got too hot. Oh, that's uh, very uh, sweet. Well, I, I guess I, uh, it's time to get going. You can do it. You have 26 miles in you and then some. Reach way down inside yourself, Walter. You have everything you need to finish the run. Don't be afraid to use it. You'll do it, Walter, for you and for me. I'll be right there with you in the middle of that crowd. Don't think about how far it is. Don't worry about strategy. Forget those thousands of people all around you psyching themselves up. Just see yourself coming down that last 300 yards in Central Park with the music going and crowds clapping. And Walter, think a little bit about me. I'll be there waiting for you. There are three minutes to race time, three minutes to start. Red numbers to the starting line, please. Red numbers to the starting line. Oh, we're going to do it. All the way. Today's the day. For the past 48 years, my biggest adventure was carrying a one in a, in a column of figures. But today, I'm crossing the threshold. Today, I'm running the marathon distance. Today, nothing is going to stop me. Nothing. Now, blue numbers to the starting line. Numbers to the starting line. Mayor Koch to the starting platform. Mayor Koch to the starting platform. Please. Let's go. Attention, all runners. We have just gotten word from the Weather Bureau that the fog will lift in the next hour. 
Where are the broads, Walter? I mean, where are those really great-looking broads? You'll see them when we get to Manhattan. Just, just stay with it. Stay with it? The Bronx is up and the battery's down. The people ride in a hole in the ground. New York, New York, it's a wonderful town. Barry said once we got down into Brooklyn, it'd be like entering another world. Yeah, it smells like another world. Yeah, I can smell commissions, pizza, salami. Yeah, rib, shish kebab, blintzes. A United Nations of the nose. <laughs> hey, that's good, Walter. The United Nations of the nose. That's cute, I remember that. <laughs> How do you feel? Good, I'm good. Me too, Walter. I'm going for it, Walter. I want the damn thing.
Are these organic? <laughs> Leave me now, we're gonna do this together. Do it! For me! Don't stop! Never stop! Go on, Walter! I am not cheating. I'm out of the race. I came here to talk to you. All right, make it fast. You gotta stop, Walter. You can't finish the race. Stop. No. I I got all I need to finish. I reached down inside. It's, it's all there. Anita is at the finish line. Do you understand? Anita is there, standing right opposite Barry. Anita's here? Near Barry? If you finish this race, Walter, you'll ruin your life. No. Walter! No! I can't stop. For, for the first time in my life, I'm, I'm gonna go for it. Walter! Walter! I love you! You can do it. You have 26 miles in you and then some. Reach way down inside yourself, Walter. You have everything you need to finish the run. Don't be afraid to use it. I'll make it. I'm gonna make it.
his wife. He's with his wife over there. I guess if, if there's anything I learned from all of this, it's, it's exactly that. You, you never know. If, if we did, we probably wouldn't bother to show up. That's, uh, that's life.